Hello! Welcome to Baking from Books. I am Callan, a reference librarian who loves good stories and trying to make things. Emphasis on the trying. Today, I'm trying to make hobbit hole door cookies. They look like this. Supposedly. It's inspired by The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, originally published in 1937. It probably needs no introduction. You're probably familiar with it. But in case you're not, it is a fantasy read about a homebody who gets roped into going on an adventure involving dragons and elves and dwarves and much more. And everything quickly gets out of hand. I love it because it's a lighthearted and quick read and it really holds your attention. So why this recipe? In the book, our hero is Bilbo Baggins, who is a hobbit and hobbits live in really cozy holes in the ground. The very first line of the book reads, in a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit, not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor, a, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing to, in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Now, importantly for our recipe, it goes on to say, it had a perfectly round door, like a porthole, painted green, with a shiny yellow brass knob in the exact middle. And now, having read that, if you look again at a picture of what the recipe is supposed to look like, you can see what we're going for here. We'll see how close I get, of course. I'd like to credit the blog Kitchen Overlord for this recipe. Go check them out. They have a lot of great recipes on geeky topics and... Um, Lots of fun franchises that you can make recipes from or inspired by. So do check out Kitchen Overlord, the source of this recipe. Now let's make it. Step one is to make red velvet cookies to be the brick base behind the green door. So get your mixer. I have hauled my stand mixer in here. If you read the recipe carefully, it looks like they're thinking you're doing it with a spoon or a spatula. I think they're trying to be inclusive of people who might not have stand mixers. Since I do have one, I'm not gonna do all this stirring by hand. First, crack two eggs into a bowl. Add one third cup of vegetable oil. Spill some on the counter and add a little more to make up for it. Then add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whip this into, and I quote, a frothy mess. Once it's nice and frothy, add one teaspoon of baking powder. Give it a nice whisking. Finally, add in a red velvet cake mix. Yum. Beat it until the batter is free of lumps. Grab a cookie sheet, or two, and your Crisco which I think is gross, but it does a great job of greasing up a cookie sheet. Get it all greased up. And another one. Now you're ready to put them on the cookie sheet. Scoop out two inch balls. So around that big, I'm not good at uh, guesstimating the size. Scoop out a big bit and then use the other spoon to work it into a ball-ish shape. And then drop that blob onto the cookie sheet. Repeat until you have all your balls on the cookie sheet. Now it's time to make your dough blobs into dough balls. So I've done this several times and what you need to do is take your flour Get a little bit on your hands. I'll clean that up. 
When your hands are all floured up, pick up one of your dough balls, which now will not stick to you, and roll it around until it's in a ball shape. Repeat until all of your dough blobs are nice little dough balls. Then you take your spatula and your cookie sheet and you squash your dough balls down so that they're actually flattened. You need them to be flat because they're going to make the door frame and doors are flat, not round. So you've got them all flat. Then stick them in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 degrees Celsius. That's 10 minutes at 350 degrees Celsius. That's a little bit low temperature and short time. Um, and you will get cookies that come out like this. They're pretty gooey and soft and you want to let them rest for a good long time before you get them off of the cookie sheet and onto a cooling rack because they will be very fragile and you don't want them to fall apart because they have to support the door um, that is the next part. And then while those are cooling off, you can make the, the door cookie, which is going to be a green peanut butter cookie. It's important to clean out your bowl of your mixer before you start into the next part because you want the two colors to stay distinct, which might mean there's a little dough eating involved. What a hardship. For the peanut butter cookies, you want to switch your mixer to the paddle attachment instead of the whisk attachment that we used for red velvet, which is good because it's very hard to wash out the whisk attachment in a quick and timely fashion. Then the first thing you want to do is you're going to cream together half a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of butter, one egg, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. No. Cream it together until it's nice and smooth. I have not once gotten it to come out nice and smooth. Once you give up and decide that's probably smooth enough, Add in one teaspoon of green food coloring. I have green gel food coloring. The recipe cautions that it might look like too much, but there's a lot of flour and peanut butter that it has to color green, so don't be scared of it. Dump in one teaspoon of green food coloring. Mix until the green food coloring is completely mixed in with the other ingredients. Once the green food coloring is all mixed in, add in a half cup of creamy peanut butter. Keep beating it until you have a thick green mass. And is it just me or does that sound really gross? Once you have your thick green mass, you're going to add in your flour, baking powder, and salt. Recipe says to do it in another bowl. I forgot to bring another bowl, so we're just going to dump it all into this one and let it fight it out on the inside. You're going to need a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of baking powder. and three quarters of a cup of flour. I am using a quarter cup measure and just putting three of them in because I don't have any better way to do it. One. And I'm going to let it mix a little bit in between just to avoid a flour explosion. Thank you. 
Interestingly, the recipe said it would toughen up a lot and you might need to knead it with your hands. I don't know if they're assuming you're not using a stand mixer or if they have a different kind of peanut butter, but in my experience it hasn't toughened up at all. The stand mixer mixes it up with no problem. Then we're ready to go on the cookie sheet. Get yourself another cookie sheet and your very slippery Crisco. Grease it all up. These dough balls you can easily make with your hands, I'm guessing because the peanut butter makes it a little bit more oily so it doesn't stick to your hands. So, wash your hands first. Next, you take your bowl of green cookie dough and you roll out dough balls that are smaller than the red velvet ones. This is very important because you need to see the red velvet one around the edge. So we're aiming for an inch and a half across instead of two inches like the last ones were. Again, I have no idea how much that is. You can roll it right in your hands into a nice dough ball. That's a little too big. About an inch and a half. And you put it on your cookie sheet. Repeat until you have the same number of dough balls as red velvet cookies. Now they're ready to go in the oven. The peanut butter cookies go into the same 350 degree oven that the red velvet cookies did, only this time these ones go in for 15 to 18 minutes. Now before you put them in the oven, again you'll want to take your spatula and squish them down so that they're flat little doors too, ready to go. Like so. Once they're flat, the recipe advises that to really make them look like a door, you take the tines of a fork or the tip of your knife and you make some straight lines in the top. Just straight parallel lines so that when it cooks it'll look a little bit more like a wood grain texture. So you repeat that until they've all got lines. Okay. And then they go into the oven at 350 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes until they got a bit of browning around the edge. Once you do that, they'll look something like this. Some nice green peanut butter cookie doors that are absolutely delicious and still soft and cooked with a little bit of browning around the edge. Let the cookies cool completely before you start to assemble them. When you're ready to assemble your hobbit hole doors, you will need, of course, your red velvet cookies, your peanut butter cookies, some Nutella or hazelnut spread to act as glue to hold them together, and then you'll need something to be your doorknob. The recipe calls for a six-slit candy. I don't know what that is. And so I was looking for another round yellow candy that would look like the brass doorknob in the center of the door. The top contenders in my mind are Reese's Pieces. You could use um, yellow or orange, one of those to be a doorknob. Or I think size-wise, uh, peanut M&Ms are some of the best doorknobs that I've found because they are bigger and rounder and they do look more like a doorknob. Some of them aren't perfectly round, so you have to be okay with a bit of a wonky doorknob. So I'm gonna use four peanut M&Ms to be my doorknobs. But you start by taking your Nutella and putting a little bit on the back of one of the peanut butter cookies. I think how much is up to you. This is definitely a measure it with your heart situation. If you like Nutella, you might wanna add some extra. So you cover the back. And then you take a red velvet cookie that's a good size compared to your peanut butter cookie and you stick them together like so. And you repeat until all four have their door and their backing together. And then you take one of your doorknobs and you dip it into the Nutella to get a little bit on the back and then use that to stick it to the green door. Like so. None of mine have come out very neat. This is probably the best I've ever done. So then, that's really all it takes. Repeat that until you've got all of your doors assembled and your results may look something like this. 
and that's it. It's actually not that hard to make and it comes out really tasty. So comment any, below with any tips you have for me on how I could do better, or what you would do differently, and make sure as always to share your results if you make it yourself. Happy reading, happy baking.